All right. Hello, hello. Welcome to your vinyasa practice. Uh, we are still working some variations and key concepts of arm balances. For the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at the family of Bakasana or crow pose. Um, and today we're gonna switch it up a little bit, but still the key concepts of core stabilization and strength, shoulder stabilization and strength, shifting weight into the hands, especially the knuckles, gripping with the fingertips, all of those things are very important and we'll continue to work with those today. Um, in addition to that, this particular pose that we're gonna work towards is called Vishvamitrasana, which is a variation of a side plank. It's still considered an arm balance because most of your weight is forward in one hand and some of the weights counterbalanced by the back foot and then the opposite foot comes forward. <laughs> so don't worry, we're gonna prepare ourselves intelligently to get there and I'm gonna give you several stops along the way to keep working on the components which are so much more important than getting into any particular shape itself, the stability and strength of the shoulders and the core and today we'll work on a little bit of hamstring lengthening um, which is is helpful for Vishvamitrasana. So that's gonna look like a couple of things in our vinyasa flow and it's kind of like from a plank you'll pull the one knee forward towards opposite elbow rotate into a side plank and kick that foot out so that foot can always come down to the ground like you're gonna thread the needle with the bottom leg, right? And the opposing hand can always come here for stabilization. So we'll work with rotation as well. I just wanted to show you that because when we get into it and start flowing, words don't always compute to body mechanics. <laughs> Let's start out in downward facing dog. And if down dog is too much for your wrist, then always just take the knees down. Okay, so just remember that this is your practice. You can modify it any way you like. I'm just making suggestions. You do not have to do what I'm suggesting. So maybe it's down dog to start. Maybe it's tabletop to start. Either way, just start to think about the foundation of the hands and where the weight is usually shifting in the hands. If it's typically in the wrist, just notice that. Can you start to shift the weight forward into the knuckles and a little bit into the fingertips, just grip the mat with the fingertips. If you're in down dog, relax your head. You can start to bend your knees right and left. And if you're in tabletop, you could extend one leg back and just give a little lengthen to that back leg. So either way, lengthening the back body, focusing on shifting the weight forward into the strongest part of the hands. Let's take about three more breaths. Again, either that tabletop or down dog, both are equally valuable. One more breath. And then we'll start off by just coming into a lunge with the right foot forward. So right foot steps forward between the hands, left knee to the mat, press into the sole of your right foot as you sweep your arms forward and up. Deep breath in here. And then on your exhale, let's come to half split. So we'll shift the right hip back over the left knee. Hands frame out that right leg. Feel the length across the back of the right leg. So maybe it's in the hamstring, maybe it's in the calf. Depends on where your tissues are tightest. Deep, full breath here. Crawl the hands forward, rebend that right knee. Step back to either your tabletop or your down dog, whatever you're working with. Relax your head. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Second side, shifting forward left foot, makes its way up between the hands, right knee to the mat, pressing into the sole of the left foot, sweeping your arms forward and up. Deep breath in here. 
And then exhaling, shifting the hips back, lengthening out through your left leg. Hands frame out that front leg, just to give yourself a little balance. Breathing into the back of the left leg, wherever you feel sensation. It might be different than the right leg. Let's take one more breath here. And then inhale, crawl yourself forward, rebend the left knee, plant the hands, making your way back to downward facing dog or tabletop. Okay, so one more time to each side, and I'm going to give you a, an option to add on to that half split. We'll shift forward, right foot between the hands. Left knee to the mat, but this time maybe keep those left toes tucked if you haven't already. Pressing into the sole of the right foot, sweeping the arms forward and up. So actively pressing into the ball mount of the left foot. Sweeping the arms forward and up, deep breath in here. And then as you exhale, shifting the hips back, lengthening out through the right leg, flex the right toes towards your face, sweeping the arms back behind you. Maybe a little bit of balance here. So the hands can come down to the floor if you like, or you can sweep the hands back. You can pause and breathe here, or you can shift your hip all the way back to that left heel. So it's more like a pistol squat, if you're familiar with pistol squats. Really challenging. <laughs> uh, we're not gonna do a pistol squat, but just to give you the kind of idea of the shape that you're putting your body in, I'm shifting my weight back towards my left heel. And so most of my body weights just kind of shifted backwards. And that allows me to breathe into the length of the back of my right leg. I'll start to crawl our hands forward, rebend that right knee. Step back down dog or tabletop. Pause here, breathe in. Breathe out. Second side, left foot forward. Keeping those right toes tucked, pressing into the sole of the left foot, breathing in, reach the arms forward and up. And then shifting the hips back, lengthen out through that left leg, option to fly the arms back, working the balance and the stretch simultaneously, or hands coming down. Again, we're just, one of our key concepts in Vishvamitrasana, our arm balance today are lengthening the hamstring. So whatever gets you to feel a stretch at the back of the hamstring is great. You don't have to work the balance. You can just bring the hands down. If you wanna move back towards that pistol squat variation, hips move all the way back towards that right heel and the left leg strengthens or lengthens out even more. And that might not work for your knees or your ankles or whatever. So just stick with a simpler variation of half split. That's totally fine. It does the same job. Wherever you are, take one more breath. We'll start to crawl our way forward, planting the hands. Downward facing dog. or tabletop, take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Shift forward into your high plank. Again, you can always set those knees down for a supported plank. Let's pause here in our plank or supported plank. Start to feel the palms rooting down through the knuckle mounds, gripping with the fingertips. Feel the shoulders, the whole shoulder. So shoulder blades, sides of the shoulders, front of the shoulders, really get fired up. So they might even start to shake a little bit. We're just isometrically holding, starting to think about how do we build strength and stability in the shoulders? So can you feel that muscle group surrounding the joint of the shoulder doing some work? Core is engaged, quadricep muscles are lifted away from the knees, glutes are firing, everything's getting tight. All right, if the knees are still lifted, set them down. Let's come all the way to the belly. 
three rounds of low cobra. Walk the hands back underneath the elbows. Press down through the tops of the feet. Tuck the chin first, rest the forehead. On your inhale, press the floor away, lift the head and the heart. And then exhale, lower all the way back to the mat, forehead touching. Twice more, inhale, press the floor away, lift the heart and the head. Exhale, lower. One more time, low cobra, Bhuja Angasana. And then releasing out of this, forehead touches the mat, toes curl under, quadricep muscles engage so much that your kneecaps lift. Press down into the ball mounds of the feet and the palms up to a supported plank or high plank. Can you take one big breath here and then lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Three breath cycles and down dog. Maybe the mouth opens and you let an audible sigh out. Inhale, shift forward again, high plank. Set the left knee to the mat. Spin the right foot flat at the back of the mat. Sweep the right arm up towards the ceiling. So now you're in a supported side plank. We're going to work a lot of side planks today. So here's your first one. Here's your first step, right? Remember, you can always come back to left knee on the mat. Left palm rooted, right arm reaching up. Take one more breath here. Right palm plants, come back to high plank, and then right knee down. Spin the left foot flat at the back of the mat. Right palm stays rooted as the left arm sweeps up. So you're just moving to the second side in your supported side plank, Vashistasana. Deep breath in here, deep breath out. Left palm plants, making your way back to high plank. Pause there, breathe in, breathe out. Lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Big full breath in, big breath out. Lift the heels, a little bend in the knees, and just step your way up to the top of your mat. We'll take an extra beat here in our forward fold at the top of the mat to just check in with the hamstrings. You can bend your knees a lot or a little, relax your head. Upper body is just starting to relax towards the lower body. We're going to move through three rounds of Surya Namaskar A or Sun Salutations with Side Plank. Okay, so let's root down through the feet, sweep the arms forward and up using your core muscles, arms all the way overhead, breathing in. Exhale, refold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, planting the hands, stepping back, high plank. Okay, so Vashistasana on your right, right hand is the base, roll to the pinky edge of the right foot, stretch that left arm high. You can stack or stagger the feet, your choice, and remember that right knee can come down to the mat for supported Vashistasana. One more breath here, and then plant that left palm, second side, left hand is your base, pinky edge of the left foot, right arm reaches high. So you're just moving from side to side in Vashistasana. Take a big breath in here. And then high plank. Shifting forward onto the tippy toes. With or without the knees, we can lower to the belly. Inhale, find a back bend that works for you. Could be another round of low cobra. You could press up into upward facing dog. And then making your way all the way back to downward facing dog. Deep breath in, deep breath out. One more time here, inhaling, exhaling. 
lifting the heels, a little bend in the knees. Step your way forward, top of the mat. Take an extra beat to fold over the legs. Uttanasana, your forward fold. And here, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, refold. Sweeping the arms forward. Use your core. Come all the way up to standing. Arms reaching overhead. Exhale, we'll fold right back down. Second round of sun salutations with our side plank variation. We're going to add on a little twist in our side plank. Stepping back, high plank. Okay, so the twist is left knee forward towards the right elbow. Spin to the inner edge of your right foot. Kick that left foot right out of the side of the yoga mat. So your base now is your left hand, the inner edge of your right foot. Reach your right arm high. Left pinky toe edge of the foot is planted on the mat. Okay, so it's a bit of a rotation. And then coming back to high plank, we'll do the second side. So from high plank, right knee forward towards left elbow. Rotate to the inner edge of your left foot. Kick your right foot straight out. Set the pinky toe edge of the right foot down. Pressing into your right hand, sweep that left arm high. Deep breath in here. Breath out, high plank. Shift forward, with or without the knees, come forward and down. Find a back bend that works for you, low to medium cobra or upward facing dog. And then making your way back, maybe it's child's pose. That was a little bit more rigorous. Oh, it's hard to talk and do that at the same time. So if you need a break like me, child's pose is a great option. Let's take two breaths. If you're in child's pose, we'll meet up in down dog. We'll move through our sun salutation with that rotated side plank with one little option to add on. Lift the heels, little bend in the knees, step your way up to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Root down through your feet, sweep the arms forward, come all the way up with strength and length. Exhaling, forward fold. Make your way to high plank. Just stepping back, pausing there. Remember the left knee is gonna come forward towards your right elbow first. You're gonna roll to the inside edge of your right foot. Kick your left foot out to the side, okay? So now here, your right arm high. Here we are, we just were here. You can stay here like that. Or can you grip the mat with your left fingertips and maybe float that left foot off the mat? We're not gonna stay here long, so if you're lifting that left foot, come back to high plank, or either way, come back to high plank. If you need to reset, knees to the mat tabletop. If you're feeling really strong and fired up, you're staying in high plank. When you're ready, second side, right knee towards left elbow, rolling to the inner edge of your left foot. Pinky toe edge of your right foot, kick it forward out to the side. Left arm lifts. You're either staying here with the right foot on the floor or pressing into the right hand and lifting the right foot up. And then making your way back to high plank or tabletop. And if you're coming into tabletop, a nice option for a vinyasa flow is just cat cow. And if you want that more traditional variation of vinyasa, forward and down, up to upward facing dog. Right, so please feel free to modify your practice, resting in either child's pose or downward facing dog. Let's take two breaths. If you're in child's pose, downward facing dog. 
last little bit of prep work here, and then we'll move towards a uh, look at Vishvamitrasana, our arm balance for the week. So in down dog, let's take the left leg up and back. Step the left foot forward between the hands, spin the right foot flat, rise up to warrior two. Just take a moment here to roll out the wrist. Give your wrists a little break. Settle into your feet, bending that left knee nice and deep. Stay rooted through your right foot. And so you're kind of mimicking what the back foot's doing in Vishvamitrasana. The sole of the right foot is just like that, as in warrior two. The difference in Vishvamitrasana is your left hand becomes your base, your right hand grabs the outer edge of your left foot and extends it forward. I'll show you what I mean in a minute, not right now. Let's hang out in warrior two for one more breath. It might sound impossible today, and, and that's okay because we have stops along the way. Left leg, move it towards straight, coming into triangle pose. Left hand down towards the left shin, maybe a block or the floor as the right arm sweeps high. So thinking about that rotation of the core, the strength and stabilization that comes from the, the core, that solid base of that right foot at the back of your mat, key elements in Vishvamitrasana. One more breath in here. Both hands down top of the mat, so you're turning into your low lunge. Stepping back, high plank, and just simply lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Take a moment here, breathe in, and breathe out. We're just gonna do that simple little flow on the second side, so right leg lifts. Step forward, right foot between the hands. Spin that left foot flat. Rise up to warrior two. Don't worry so much about the arms today. What we're thinking about in our warrior two stance today is the back left foot. It's mimicking what Vishvamitrasana is gonna do, your side balance. So think about that left foot being firmly rooted there. It's gonna help you balance. And I want you to be aware of it when you attempt this arm balance. If you want to, you can roll out the wrist a few times, a few more breaths in your warrior two. And then the right leg moves towards straight. Trikonasana, right hand forward and down towards the shin floor, or maybe a prop such as a block or a stack of books. And the left arm reaches high. Deep breath in, deep breath out. And we'll start to rebend into that right knee, turn the torso to face forward and down, coming into your low lunge. And then from here, stepping back to high plank and just take a knee. So I want you to watch this first variation. We're gonna do it a couple of times on each side. And remember that you have options to stop and work the key concepts, the key benefits of this shape, the strength and stabilization in, in the shoulders and the core, that pressing down through the back foot and the rotation of the spine, all of those things are really helpful whether or not you get into Vishvamitrasana. Okay, so just watch. I'm gonna come into high plank first. I'm gonna pull my left knee forward towards my right elbow. And then here's where we've, we've gone before. We kick that left foot forward and out, right arm lifts, okay? And then see how I'm firmly rooting through my right foot, just as I was in triangle and warrior two. So I can stay here, or I can bend my left knee, hook my foot with my right hand, all my weight's going forward into this left hand and gripping it, and then I extend my left leg forward. So you might just maybe see if from that place of stability, you could pick up the foot, hold it, or just practice that rotation of the spine and the core stabilization and strength as you pick up the foot. All of it's gonna be great and helpful. You don't have to get that left leg forward and straight. You don't have to hold the 
foot with the hand, okay? So think about these as like stops and options along the way. So let's try it together. We'll come to high plank. Deep breath in, left knee forward towards right elbow. Rotating your feet first, so you're spinning to the sole of the right foot, kicking the left foot out, right arm reaches. Here's a great place to stay and work. Or you can float the left foot, also a great place to stay. Or bend the left knee, I'm reaching down, holding my outer foot with my hand. So my right hand's holding my outer left foot, and here's a great place to work. Or maybe I'm extending the left leg out long. So that left leg, extending it forward and out long, that's why we did all of that hamstring lengthening stuff. Half split, forward fold, all that kind of stuff. If you're still in Vishvamitrasana or any of those steps along the way, come out, take a breath, knees to the mat, a few rounds of cat-cow, or just settle into child's pose. Just take a break, relax the wrists. Let the breath return to normal, as normal as it can. And then let's try the second side if you're ready. So start off in that high plank. That right knee is gonna move across towards your left elbow first. You're gonna roll to the inner edge and the sole of the left foot kicking the right foot forward and through, left arm lifts. Here's a great place to work. If you wanna take it further, you're pressing a little bit more weight into the right hand, gripping with your fingertips and lifting the right foot off the floor and staying there or bending the right knee. Maybe see if you can catch hold of the pinky toe edge of the right foot with the left hand and then maybe you extend it forward or not, right? So any step along the way is gonna help you build strength and stability in the core and the shoulders. Try it again if you like, maybe pick up where you left off. Find your breath. Now these are challenging shapes, big moves. Don't be hard on yourself if it doesn't happen today, especially if this is the first time you've ever tried it. We're gonna try another approach to it next week. And you can always come back to this recording if you want another look at it. Let's get out of that. Either come to down dog or child's pose. Down dog or child's pose. Let the breath return to normal. And then from the shape you're currently in, let's just make our way onto our backs. All the way down to the back, bending the knees, hugging the knees into the chest. Give yourself a little squeeze. Maybe a little rock side to side. And then let's move towards happy baby. You can reach up for the soles of the feet or anywhere along the backs of the legs. See if you can relax your shoulders down towards the mat. Keep your neck relaxed, your throat soft. Back of the head resting. You could play with extending one leg out, both legs out. You can rock side to side. And take a couple more breaths in your happy baby. I'm just feeling everything start to slow down, the breath, the heart. If there's any other shape you want to take before Shavasana, please feel free. When you're ready for Shavasana, start to settle in. I'm gonna set us a timer for about a minute. Please know that you're more than welcome to take longer. I highly encourage it. 
As you come to your final resting shape, deep breath in through the nose. Opening your mouth, exhale your out. Let your jaw relax and soften. Maybe let your eyes close if you feel comfortable with that. Can you relax all the muscles of your face? And start to take the air in and out through the nose. Let the body become still. The Shavasana. If you have longer to spend in Shavasana, please stay as you are. If you need to move on with your day, start to awaken, wiggling the fingertips, the toes. You can move your head side to side. Bending your knees, rolling off to a side. Fetal position for a moment. And pressing your way up. We'll just take a moment to briefly close out our practice. Sitting up nice and tall, shoulders over the hips, ears over the shoulders, breathing in, grow tall through the spine. Breathing out, settle into your seat. Again, breathing in, grow tall. And breathing out, settle. One more breath here like this. Deepest, fullest breath you can take. Long, smooth, complete exhale. Let it go, let it rest. Invitation to bring your hands together at the heart and bow the chin into the chest, taking a moment here to honor your effort and your practice with reverence and gratitude. To all of our teachers, past, present, future, to the teacher within your own heart. Namaste, yogis. Thanks so much for joining me today. Hope you enjoyed your practice. Be kind. That was a tough one. Uh, take care of yourselves, and I hope you come back again soon. <laughs>